at the end of the personal statement, if I can understand the journey that you've been on and why you're here, mm-hmm. you've done your job. Mission accepted season two, episode 12. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am ecstatic to be talking to you and uh, learning from you and hopefully having other people learn from your success. So first of all, congratulations. You are accepted to medical school. That's the first big hurdle on this journey to becoming a physician. What do you think it was about your application cycle, interviews, writing, whatever, uh, that led to your success this application cycle? Um, I really feel like, you know, just being well prepared, um, but also just, you know, doing a fair amount of research and just being comfortable with whatever phase of the application cycle it was, whether that was writing the personal statement or filling out the extracurriculars, getting the application done in a timely manner, um, and then just being comfortable with the interview when it rolled around too. Um, all of that kind of a culmination of everything and obviously doing well in the MCAT too, um, helped. So, (laughs) Oh, that little thing, that little thing called the MCAT. Okay. That definitely helps. So, uh, basically what you're saying is being prepared, being intentional about every step of the process. How did you keep all that organized? Cause it's, it's a lot. Yeah, it is. Um, I think just a few ways, just having deadlines for myself where I said, you know, I will have my application in at this point. I will have applied um, to a certain school by this point. I will have applied for taking my MCAT at this certain timeline. Um, I think just having deadlines for yourself helps you to be a little more organized and definitely helped me along the way. Nice. So not a procrastinator, which is great. Uh, nice, yeah. and, nice and organized. All right. Um, before we jump into your application, give me some breakdown. How many application cycles have you been through? How many interviews, acceptances, et cetera, at this point? Um, so this was my first application cycle. Um, yeah. And I had applied to one school and I got one acceptance. Uh, so one's across the board, one application yeah. cycle, one school. Yep. Risky, risky. Um, yes. talk about that. Why one school? Because lots of people out there are like, I can only go to this one school. I only want to go to this one school. Yep. And everyone um, is like, don't do it. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I was told many times by the physicians that I shadowed, you know, be, you know, be aware of this, that yep. it is, it's very risky to only apply to one school. And obviously listening to you a lot, I had heard that a lot too, of like, okay, this is very risky to only apply to one school, but um, for me and my family, I'm married um, and we, my wife and I have a daughter. And so staying here locally, she is um, also in school. I'm going for a nurse practitioner. And so for her to finish up her degree, I needed to stay in this area. And so we decided I'd apply to one school this time. And if I wouldn't get into this one school, then I would apply to more schools the following time. Love it. So yeah. again, this is the perfect example of what you said at the beginning, being prepared, being organized, having deadlines, very intentional about everything you did with the application cycle, including having those conversations with your significant other to say, where are we in this situation? Where are we in this world? Where are we in our lives? What can we do right now where I can apply, even with you in school, with our daughter, I can apply this cycle to one school. I understand that. I understand it's a risk. It's called informed consent, right? In medicine, here are your risks. Here are the benefits. Uh, Here's maybe what I would recommend as a physician. And and you said, I'm going to try it. I understand. I have have taken in from other people that, yes, this is risky, but I'm going to do it knowing that it is a risk, knowing that it's it's still a decent a chunk of change to just apply yeah. to one school. Uh, yes. But I'm going to do it. That's perfect. Too many people go through this process just kind of like, uh, whatever, I don't know, I, uh, I'll, we'll figure it out. And it just doesn't work, right? You have to be intentional. And so I love it. I love it. So I'm, I'm glad you applied to one school, knowing that if it didn't work out, I'll apply to more schools next time. My wife will be out of uh, school at that point. We can move and she can find a job where whatever, right? Perfect. Love it. All right. 
let's jump in to your application, to your one school, uh, and see where things are. So looking at your application, um, we get down to kind of the red flag area. Oh, first, first off, I, I love pointing out when you applied. You applied kind of within that first two weeks of the application cycle being open this cycle, uh, the 2021-2022 application cycle. It opened yep. May 27th, I believe. And so mm -hmm. you were you were just a, a week or so after that. Perfect. No issues there. But it's very interesting to see. The episode before this, the student applied day one within the first couple hours. Right. And, and he was approved or processed uh, within a week, I think. Oh, wow. You were about a week after submission wise and it took a month to get back. yeah yeah it's just crazy how long the double amc takes but it is what it is all right yeah so yeah. red flag area no issues there which is great we don't like issues in the red flag area uh you did not consider yourself disadvantaged um and so no disadvantaged essay we get down to grades and we see um university of south dakota here which is kind of a foreshadowing moment. So you're, are, were you, are you born and bred South Dakota? Nope. I grew no. up in Southwest Minnesota. So okay. real close, but not yeah. quite in South Dakota. Right over the border. All right. Yep. Um, so we get uh, to your classes and we get lots of A's, a couple of B's slipping in there. How dare you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but a, A's and B's throughout. And so we get to the end and we go, okay, solid GPA, no issues there. Why did you do a post back? Um, I had to go back and take some required classes that the college or the school of medicine that I knew I was going to apply to require. So okay. um, the uh, medical school that I applied to and got accepted to requires that I take these certain classes. And so that's what I had to go back and take those classes for. Okay. Awesome. So uh, solid GPA, no issue. MCAT score, solid MCAT score, right? It's above the average for matriculated students. That's always a good place to be. Um, mm -hmm. So no issues anywhere. That stupid car score holding you back from a from an even better GPA. Uh, yes. It's a good and, car score, but compared yeah, to the 129s. That was, my, that was my best car score that I had, so. Yeah, ever. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so for you, stats were not an issue. When you compared your stats to the median on the MSAR for the school that you, you ended up applying to and getting accepted, where does that lie? Um, it is, uh, compared to the median, I guess I'd have to look back, but I think it's right around there because three mine was 3.7 and okay. it was... I, I think the the cumulative was right around there was 3.7 or 3.8. So okay. right there. Yep. All right. And let's get to your activities. So mm -hmm. we have physician shadowing, which is awesome during the yep. pandemic. Great. Um, we, we like that. We like shadowing. So mm -hmm. that's, that's good. You have a couple shadowing here. You have a pediatrician here also during the pandemic. Uh, when everyone else couldn't get it, you were there yeah. rocking and rolling. Yeah. And then we get to uh, an experience that's like, okay, starting in January 2019, going through when you're starting medical school, you're a nurse. You've, yep. been, you've been working as a nurse. Yes. So I, I love it. Obviously, mm -hmm. amazing clinical experience. Mm -hmm. Talk about why you are a nurse. Are, are you a nurse because you wanted to be a nurse? And then at some point you were like, yeah, maybe not. Or was nurse just a stepping stone or was it a detour? What, what, what is this nursing path here? Um, so for me right away, if you actually go back and look at my grades, I had um, a few classes that were required for medical school beforehand because I was debating on trying to apply to medical school beforehand. Okay. Um, and I, I got a B in physics and I thought with how competitive everything was and everything, I was like, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able <laughs> it's to. It's the end of the world. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't have the, you know, all the experiences and just different knowledge from other, you know, people and just different things. And so I decided, I don't know if I can do it. And my wife was already going into nursing at that point anyways, and she was in nursing school. Okay. Um, and so I headed down that path thinking, well, maybe someday I could become an advanced practice provider that way. Mm -hmm. 
So then I get done with nursing school and I start working and I find myself gravitating towards residents and fellows and the attendings <laughs> and asking them tons of questions and asking my nursing colleagues some of the same questions and them going, I don't know, and I just know. kind of yeah. leaving at that or, you know, a select few searching for answers. But most times I was finding answers with the residents and fellows. And so that really pushed me towards, well, what, what path do I want to take from here? And then there was actually another nurse in my hospital that went back to medical school, the same medical school that I'm going to. And he did a very similar thing, got accepted. And I said, oh, wait, like that's a way that you can go. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And so that's when I really started to look more into it and taking, um, starting to take classes. And I found your podcast and every all the other resources that you have along with that. Um, and then that just really pushed me towards the medical school route. Nice. Okay. So very, very common. Unfortunately, I think we lose a lot of people who could have been amazing physicians just get discouraged from that L lone B. Usually it's a C, but you, you yeah. got that B. Yes. You're like B equals bad. Um, yes. All right. yes. So uh, awesome. You, you, you course corrected and, and obviously made it to the uh, point where you want to be and where you are now. So that's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Great storytelling here at, uh, in your activity description, which is awesome. Nice little mm -hmm. reflection here at the, the end of your activity description. My hope as a physician is to care for every aspect of a patient's health, right? Just a tiny little uh, reflection on what you took away from this. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, volunteering in Guatemala. Uh, again, mm -hmm. as I reflect back, I hope that someday as a physician, I can show compassion, provide care for patients in a manner that makes me grateful for all of the opportunities in my life. Nice little reflection, nice little kind of head nod to uh, the privilege of being in the United States, as many problems as we have. Uh, it's still better than a lot of other countries uh, in a lot of ways. So uh, nice recognition to that as well. Uh, again, nursing intern, so just showing more of this nursing path that you were on. Nice little storytelling here. Did you mm -hmm. get any uh, outside feedback uh, help with your activity descriptions, pre-health uh, kind of office at your undergraduate institution? Um, not at my undergrad institution. I had some help from the previous applicant and a few other applicants that I had known. And then mostly it was just your resources that you had up on, you know, your website. And I, I bought your interview book, which had a few things in there for descriptions as well. Nice. Um, and so I really can attribute most of that storytelling to, you know, the resources that I got from you. Nice. Good job implementing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're a good, good student. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Again, showing this path, uh, nursing assistant before med uh, before nursing school, being mm -hmm. EMT before that. So just showing this constant exposure to healthcare, lots of good stories, front desk assistant story, which is awesome. And again, I like mm -hmm. to clarify because Reddit flames me for this. Like, not every activity needs a story, but when you have one, do it. Works, yeah, yeah, works well. Um, uh, so lots of variety here, talking about being an RA, talking about as housing operations crew. A lot mm -hmm. of people will not put those on the application because they're like, well, it's not really related to medicine. It doesn't really help me at all. Did you have any concern about putting these kind of random things on your application? Uh, initially, I did until I had heard you kind of speak about them. <laughs> and then I started to think about them more, too, and how... Not, I mean, not that they had huge impacts, but they still had an impact. I mean, it was yep. something that I had done for a period of time and kind of helped me get to where I am now. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Good, good. Every, every little piece of your history has formed who you are as a person. So mm -hmm. let the medical school see that, right? Let them see who you are, which is awesome. Yep. Um, all right. Archery assistant. How much did archery assistant come up in your interview? Um, it actually never did. Now that oh, I think, oh man, that's yeah. sad. Talking about archery, I know. that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk about brave. We could talk about some some Pixar movies or uh, uh, the Hunger Games, right? Where archery yeah. became super super popular. Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. Talk about being a farmhand. Talk about uh, having a hobby, which I love having hobbies on the application. So just all wonderful, great stuff that. You're not trying to force, ooh, look how look look how being a baseball player has made me 
to be a better future doctor. Or look how being a farmhand has uh, helped me with my future patients. Like you just, here's who I am, plain and simple. Um, uh, and, and that is what I think is the biggest difference between a great application and one that ends up on app, uh, application renovation uh, with similar stats, similar experiences, yeah. similar stats, is how are you letting me see who you are? And and yep. I think you did a great job throughout. So I, I know we went through through those pretty fast. So for anyone watching, like you can you can pause and kind of just check them out. Um, yeah. And then we get that to. Was, I mean, just to go back a yeah. little bit. I mean, that was something that I really wanted to focus on as I was combing back through those and rereading those. Okay, is this me trying to sell something, or is this me trying to just be myself and just say, you know, here I am. You yeah. know, whatever you want to do with that information, but this is me you know, personally and honestly, instead of, you know, you always talk about that. Don't sell yeah. yourself because it's not like, this isn't some sale of like, oh yeah, I'm the better student and somebody else won't be, you know, we all have that potential in us. And I think you do a great job of portraying that too, but yeah, just, you know, really combing through those and saying, is this me myself trying to present myself here? Yeah. Love it. Awesome. All right. And then we get to your personal statement, mm -hmm. um, you're in your EMS uniform, your shiny black boots, um, mm -hmm. and, and what you're watching here. And you, you say, as I watched the providers taking care of John and his dying moments, I thought about how I wanted to learn as much as I could to help another patient like John and to possibly save their life. So nice little kind of like, I, I need more, I want more, I wanna do as much as possible. And, yes. and then your, your next paragraph here, you start off, while my experiences as an EMT sparked my interest in medicine. So I go, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Why, why were you an EMT to begin with? Um, for me to begin with, it was just a program that they had offered. And it was, you know, something that I had realized that I maybe liked healthcare, but I wasn't sure. And as I went through the class of learning how to become an EMT and learning the skills, and then obviously going on calls after that, um, just really pushed me towards, okay, this thing in healthcare is something that I want to do. I don't know in what, you know, avenue or pursuit I want to do it yet, but EMT is a pathway that I think I can get there towards something that I want to, you know, ultimately do. Yeah. Where do you think that initial interest in healthcare came from? Uh, I think it traces back to high school, my very first anatomy class. We sat down and just saw all different, you know, dissections and started learning everything about our own bodies, but also, you know, all different animals and stuff too. Yeah. And so I think that's really where it came from originally. Awesome. Okay. So you, you have this whole second paragraph here is basically you're like, I'm going to tell you about my detour to nursing school and then yep. back. Why do you think you needed to include that? To me, I guess that's just how it felt most genuine. Mm -hmm. um, I, I suppose I could have just left it out and just, you know, made it seem like that was going to be my pathway the whole time. But for me, that was like, if I wouldn't have had that thought process or those, you know, gone through that the way that I did, I don't know if I would have ended up, you know, eventually applying to medical school and yeah. going down this path that I'm going down now. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So this is a very uh, common kind of question for students who have this seed of doubt that, that is placed with that darn B in physics yes. Uh, yes. And, and then going and exploring something else for a little bit, but ultimately coming back to medicine and wanting to go to medical school is, is how do I talk about that? And mm -hmm. I, my answer is usually you just tell the truth, like what happened? And that's yeah. basically what you do here. So that's a, a great job doing that. Uh, I think uh, an appropriate thing to to put here, maybe a little bit too long, not not too long, but maybe a little bit more than it needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, so that you could focus on some other aspects, but uh, all in all, a good job of, of allowing me as the reader to go, okay, I understand this journey that you've been on. And that's just the, at the end of the personal statement, if I can understand the journey that you've been on and why you're here, mm -hmm. you've done your job. Very interesting. You're a couple times a little salesy I highlighted here uh, in terms of your sense of wonderment and curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, why do you think you, you highlighted those things? And the two things that I highlighted here was one as a, uh, I think a physician here pulling you aside, 
saying, oh, you have a spark in your eye uh, and you should keep trying for that sense of wonderment, right? And then talking about the sense of wonderment and curiosity to learn are traits that drive me to want me to be a physician. What was that that focus there? Was that just kind of how you're verbalizing or, or writing here that switch from nursing to physician is I, I have more curiosity, more wonderment that I just, I can't stay as a nurse. Yeah, I think, I think that's most of what it was. Um, and it was just something that I, at times I kind of felt like I was forcing it. There was at one point I kind of just took that part of it out and didn't, didn't leave it in the personal statement, but had decided ended up that that was something that I wanted to um, come across as during um, applying during that uh, personal statement. So, yeah. So one of the ways, and and I, I highlight, I just scrolled up a little bit more. There's one other kind of piqued my curiosity comment here. One of the ways that I've, I've kind of helped students work in that curiosity, but mm-hmm. remove some of the cliche-ness from it is like, oh, I'm just really curious. Therefore I should be a doctor is being able to translate it into what does that mean for your patients, Mm. right? As a nurse, you can be infinitely curious. Oh yeah. But still not have the biggest impact on a patient because you're not diagnosing and treating them unless you go on to kind of that, that APP route where you're, you're an NP potentially. So, For you, you have this curiosity, you're drawn to the residents, to the attendings, asking questions. What is the the end result of that curiosity for you is having a piece of paper that says you are a physician, you may go out and kind of do whatever physicians can do, having a bigger impact on the patients, which typically ultimately is what you mean by yeah. being more curious and, and, and so forth. So that's a, a potential way to have worked in the curiosity angle and still kind of been uh, on task and a little bit less cliche than just, I'm a curious person, therefore I should be a doctor. And then you you have a great conclusion here talking about uh, kind of big picture, what you're hoping to do uh, as a physician. And that's that's really solid. And then your one school that you applied to, Yep. The one school you got into. Um, Talk about the, the moment you found out you got into that school. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ever forget it because I was actually at work that day. Um, And I, I assumed, I just assumed as soon as I had actually submitted my application on June, whatever day that was, that when I find out if, whether I got in or not, I'll be at work. Like, I just know it's going to (laughs) happen. And it lined up that way. Um, And so I was sitting at the nurse's station um, just waiting because I knew they had told me that, hey, you know, you may get an email on this day. And so I was, of course, refreshing my email all the time, back and forth and back and forth and um, came in and just, I mean, overwhelmed with emotion. Um, I'm kind of honestly surprised that I didn't cry, Um, but it was, you know, just something that is so special and right away asked someone if they could watch my watch my patients so that I could call my wife and called and talked with her. And yeah, it was just so special to have that come in and say, you know, congratulations, you got in. <laughs> That's awesome. What, what did your wife say when you told her? She's like, no way, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I don't believe you. No way you got yeah. in. <laughs> but that is, I mean, that's totally within her personality. She's always, like, no, you got to prove it. <laughs> She's a skeptic. That's all right. Yes. Um, yes. That's awesome. I, I wanted to take a look at your secondary because when I when I looked at your secondary, um, I, I loved kind of the deep dive that you did with kind of why this school. So the, the question here, mm-hmm. given the mission statement of the school, explain how your experiences and long-term goals would help meet the mission, right? The mission of the school. And yep. so you really dive into here's who I am yeah. and here are parts of the school where we just are like a match made in heaven. So you dive into this farm program uh, mm-hmm. and, and why you're interested in it, how you can contribute and stuff like that. So really, mm-hmm. really solid job. That's what makes a break in my mind. A great secondary application from kind of a blah one is really doing that deep dive and not just listing, right? You could have said, well, you have the farm program, which blah, 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 blah. I'm basically like just paraphrasing what the website says, but yeah. you tailored it to, and here's who I am. 
And and that's why I'm interested in this program. That's just a big difference in, in how to approach those types of questions. So, and I really have to give credit to you for that because you know you had talked about in many of the applications where that made a difference because you know students can list out all these things. Well, anyone can go to that website and read it. Yeah. And so for me to just go there and read that, okay, yeah, I can do that. But also, how can I incorporate myself into that and say, you know, this is a great program because instead exactly. of just saying. Oh, you have this program and that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having this program. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, that, that's awesome. What is your biggest takeaway from your interview day? Um, I think for me, it was very nice to be comfortable. I grew up and it doesn't list it on my application because I did a lot of stuff in high school, but i had always been very comfortable with public speaking. Mm. So when interviews rolled around, I, I always felt like it was a conversation. And then I read your book and you're like, Hey, like, this is literally just a conversation. Yeah. Um, and so it just made me feel that much more at ease. Yeah. Um, and so I had already done a fair amount of research and it was, you know, the same university that I had gone to for undergrad. So for that, I was very comfortable with the area with other undergraduate programs. And so, from there, I had plenty of answers. And so just really finding out from the faculty, you know, what it is about the school that why I actually want to go there too. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And then biggest lesson, biggest takeaway from pre-med to application cycle to now having your acceptance, what is, what is your biggest takeaway that you think maybe had contributed or led to your success? You know, it's kind of strange because I don't think I would have said it if I would have just gone straight through and got into medical school. But I think that seed of doubt um, really, obviously, it made me go a completely roundabout way. But yet it still brought me back to the same point that I wanted to be at. And it just really pushed me towards, no, this is really what I want to do. Like I had, you know, plenty of opportunities to progress in within nursing and I could have. Um, but decided that this was the way that I feel like I would fit the most. Um, and so that seed of doubt actually really strengthened me and my confidence in applying to medical school and becoming a physician. Talk about, I, I've talked to several nurses who have now gone on to medical school. Some of them kind of were pre-medish before and then took a, took a detour like you did. Some were just nurses and then decided they wanted to go to medical school. Yep. Uh, and not just nurses, but, but, but you know right. what I mean? Um, yeah. the, the overwhelming, I think, and this anecdotally, the overwhelming message a lot of times is nurses tend to, who, who want to go to medical school tend to keep it close to their vest. Cause mm -hmm. there's this like, well, why, like, is nursing not good enough for you? Like, why, why do you mm -hmm. want to be a physician? And, and there's a kind of a us and them kind of mentality with nurses and, and physicians. Did, did you get any of that pushback? Uh, did you tell anyone that you were going down this path? What was that like for you? Um, I waited actually just a little bit, but only a few weeks before I ended up telling people that I was, but it was, it, people at work were going to find out anyways, because I had to cut down from full-time work to part-time work. Um, and so, when I did that and I had told my boss, um, and so she was going to know, but I knew that others were going to find out too. And I just thought, well, you know, this is the way that I'm going to go. And I just don't see in what ways it could hurt me or hinder me by telling more people. Yeah. There were really only a few that really questioned my motives of like, okay, but why this, like, why not nurse practitioner? Why not CRNA? Like, those are great. And I'm like, yes, they are. But yeah. for me, I feel like to be the most fulfilled that I could be was going to be the medical school route. Yeah. It, so go ahead. Uh, that, I mean, just really like telling people. And then all of a sudden when I told just a few people, everybody knew, and I was just telling everyone that nice. like, Hey, yep, I'm applying to medical school. And, and then several of the physicians found out and they were excited and, you know, just not having those things in the dark, I feel like just helped me out a lot. And I was able to find out, you know, more connections than I even thought, you know, there were several prof professors for the medical school that were like, Hey, yeah, if you're applying, you know, just let me know and we can talk and chat and, you know, find things out. And that, yes, yeah. helps out tons. Yeah. So I, I, I tell my own story often, uh, wh when I talk about this, about like, yeah. if you're comfortable, tell as many people as possible because you don't know where you're going to find allies. 
uh, people yes. who have connections that you just didn't know. And, and the story that I always tell is when I applied to medical school my second time, I was living in Boston and I was the in, in uh, at the company, it was called a fitness program manager. So in the gym, it was Boston Sports Clubs. Uh, we had the general manager and then mm-hmm. we had the fitness program manager was kind of second in line at, at the uh, at the gym at that specific location. So I was in charge of all the trainers, all of the kind of live classes and stuff. And I was applying to medical school and I kept it on the down low because I was making mm-hmm. a, a good amount of money as a manager and blah, blah, blah. And so I get into medical school. Like I take my day off to go <laughs> drive down to New York to, to interview. And uh, however long later, my mom calls because it was it was snail mail to my home address, which was here in oh, Colorado. So my mom calls because she opened up the 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 mail and uh-huh. uh, told me I got in. And so I immediately go and, and tell my boss. And she didn't know that I was applying to medical school, that I wanted to go to medical yeah. school. And we had a great relationship. We were friends. And uh, it's just yep. something that I always kept a secret. And yeah. she's like, why didn't you tell me? She's like, my dad is a pulmonologist at Wash U in St. Louis. And I'm just like, oh, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I could have gone to Wash U. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And so, yeah, you just never know who you're going to find. So it's was, it was great that you were able to find those allies to, to help you mm-hmm. out along the way. And you never know, right? You'll find out in 10 years that it's like, oh, yeah, like Dr. Smith just gave you glowing recommendations uh, of, of your communication, your teamwork, whatever, uh, as a nurse. And that's what really tipped it uh, over the edge for you to get your acceptance. So yep, yep. that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, one of the pediatricians that um, I went and shadowed with is my daughter's pediatrician, but she's a part of the medical school and is a director of one of the programs. And so I was like, it'd be silly not to tell her. And she's like, oh, yeah, if you need anything, let me know, you know, and I'll yeah. definitely talk with people. And, you know, you never know how far that's going to go. You never know. Well, Congratulations uh, on all your success. Thank one, you. one, and one. You can't yes. get more perfect than that. Yeah. Um, when you're applying for residency, probably expand that a little bit more. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, good luck, uh, and thanks for coming on and being vulnerable and sharing your story. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for having me.